So, welcome to the lecture on mathematical modeling. Today, we will discuss uh, in this lecture the modeling of translational mechanical system. So, we know that a system can be modeled in different ways, different methods. So, the first and basic and very common method is the differential equations. So, we can model uh, different type of systems using differential equations. Then we can also model using the transfer functions or we can model in state space domain. So, here we will focus more on modeling in differential using differential equations and then converting them to transfer functions. So, in this lecture we are focusing the mechanical system that has the translational motion. So, they have only the translational degree of freedom. We are not considering a mechanical system with rotational degree of freedom in this lecture. We will consider them in the next lecture. So, the translational mechanical system. So, a mechanical system comprises several components and a mechanical system can be represented in terms of basic elements of mechanical systems like spring, mass and damper. So, here we can model a system, mechanical system using these elements because mass is inertia, it represents inertia element, spring is energy storing element and damper is energy dissipating element. So, in a mechanical system these three phenomena occurs and these three elements represent those phenomena. So, let us take a very simple system and that is a single degree of freedom system which have only one translational degree of freedom in which the mass can move and how to write the differential equation for this system and then we convert this differential equation to find the transfer function of the system or we can find the block diagram for that system. So, this is a system single degree of freedom system mass spring and damper system. So, this is a system and here it is subjected to some force F t. So, here we want to know the x t. So, here is the system, we apply input F t and we are interested in output x t. So, x is the translational degree of freedom or displacement of this system, the mass and f t is a force as force is applied externally. So, it is input to the system. Now, here we assume that this spring behaves linearly in the range of operation. So, here we have the relationship f equal to k x for this spring. Similarly, this damping is viscous damping. So, viscous damping relationship is represented by c equal to f equal to the viscous force f equal to c into x dot. So, here this is the relationship linear relationship between the viscous force 
let us say this is damper force F t. So, this relationship is linear. So, this is our assumptions in processing this example. So, now first we have to find the dif differential equation of this system. So, when we apply certain force to the system and system is oscillating or in motion, let us say at time t we the system has some displacement x t. So, in the, this instant of time we make the free body diagram of this system. So, this is a system here, this is m. here the force is F t. So, in a free body diagram we will show all the forces acting on the system. So, action reaction force, action force, okay, inertia force. So, here F t if we this mass is displaced with x the spring will apply a reaction force that is k into x and that will be opposite to the movement of this x. So, this is k into x. Similarly, the damper, if this is x, this will have also some velocity x dot t. So, if damper will apply some force c x dot on this system. and there is some acceleration x double dot of this system and this will represent the acceleration will represent m mass into acceleration will represent the inertia force. So, we apply the Newton's second law. to this system to find the equation of motion of this system. So, Newton's law we apply m x double dot equal to sigma f. So, m x double dot equal to some summation of the forces. So, here m x double dot. So, forces here is f t that is we represent in the same direction as x double dot. So, it is positive minus k x, k x is opposite. So, minus k x and then minus c x dot. Now, this equation we can simplify m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x equal to f t. So, here this equation is m d square x by d t square plus c d x by d t plus k x equal to f t. So, we see that the equation of motion of this system is a second order differential equation. So, this is differential equation of second order now we have to find the transfer function for this system. So, we have to to find the transfer function we know what we have to do we have to take the Laplace transform of both sides of this equation. So, if we take the Laplace transform of both sides, what will happen? So, m d square x by d t square plus c 
d x by d t plus k x equal to f t. So, this is the our equation differential equation. Now, let us take the Laplace transform. So, here m, so this is a second order differential equation. So, we remember that we take the Laplace transform. So, s power n, so s power 2 s square and f s. So, this is x, so x s plus c d x by d t. So, this is 1 power differential equation. So, s into x s plus k and this is x. So, this is x s and that is equal to f s. Now, we should understand that here the d square x, x is function of t. Here I have written already this x is function of time. So, we can write here also like x t. So, we are coming from time domain to complex frequency domain or s domain for this system. And so, this is our system. So, what will be the in the transfer function? So, we have f t. So, here is f s and this is the output here is x s and what is here is g s. Let us say this is the transfer function. So, we have to find g s. So, g s is output upon input and here already we have done initial conditions we have taken 0. So, g s equal to x s upon f s. So, we have to find from here x s upon f s. So, we can write m s square plus c s plus k x s equal to f s. So, x s upon f s equal to 1 upon m s square plus c s plus k. and this is equal to g s. So, we see that this is the transfer function and we can write this in this block inside the block that is 1 upon m s square plus c s plus k. Now, from this transfer function we need one we need a discussion on this transfer function we can see that the highest power in s is 2. So, from transfer function it is clear that this is a second order system and same is clear from here that the power of the differential equation that is second order. The second thing I told in the last lecture that transfer function is a property of a system. It does not depends on input conditions. So, property of the system means what? It contains the, it is made of the parameters of the system. So, what are those parameters? What are the parameters of the system? They are m, k and c because the system, physical system is represented in terms of its basic elements mass, stiffness and damping and therefore, you can see here this expression contains m, c and k and the other is no any other parameter of input, nothing. So, therefore, this transfer function represents the system because it is made of, it contains the parameters of the system. If we change these parameters, the transfer function will change. So, it means the system will be changed. So, therefore, transfer function gives us the information about the system. 
So, now this was a translational mechanical system of the first order. Now, we go uh, or that is a single degree of freedom system, uh, not the first order, but it is second order system, but single degree of freedom system, only one degree of freedom. Now, we go to higher degree of freedoms, like two degree of freedoms for the translational systems. So, now we can see another mechanical system and this is a second order system. Why? Because we have two masses and each mass has one degree of translation. So, there is two degrees of freedom for this complete system and the mass can, the mass is connected from here this spring then between the two masses there is a spring and damper and there is this side one spring. Here K1, K2, K3 the stiffness of these springs and the damper has a damping viscous damping coefficient C3. There is friction between this mass and the surface when the mass moves and this friction is represented as a uh, equivalent viscous damping coefficient C1 and C2 for mass M2. So, this is mass M1 and this is mass M2. So, now we have to find the transfer function for this system and you can see here we have applied the input force Ft only on the there is only one force input applied that is on the first mass. We can also ap apply some another force on the second, but that will be then multiple input system. So, now we have to find the transfer function for this system and we are more interested to find x to s by f s. So, the transfer function of this x to s upon f s. So, let us write the first the differential equation. So, if we write the differential equation, so we make the free body diagram bar for both the systems. So, here m 1 and here is m 2. So, now let us say this is x 1 t and here is a force F t applied on this system. So, when we this mass moves in this direction there will be a spring force up working here that is k 1 x 1 
and there will be a damping force working here that is C1 x1 dot. Here this mass is moving x2, this is x1. So, the relative moment of this mass in this direction is x1 minus x2 and so this is a spring will be compressed by the amount x1 minus x2. So, it will apply a force in this direction that will be k2 x1 minus x2 and similarly a damper will apply a force C3 x1 dot minus x2 dot. So, and this mass is moving with acceleration x1 dot double dot. Now, if we apply the forces on the second mass, we can see this mass is moving x2 here, this is compressing this a spring, this a spring will apply a force opposite to this movement that is k3 x2. There is the damping force here and this is moving this direction. So, this will apply a force in this direction that is C2 x2 dot. Now, here these forces will also act here. So, these forces will act here. So, these forces will act C 3 x 1 dot minus x 2 dot and here k 2 x 1 minus x 2 and this is moving as x 2 double dot. Now, we apply the Newton second law sigma f equal to m x double dot for this mass. So, m x 1 double dot equal to the forces. So, the forces in the, this direction is f t, others are in opposite direction. So, f t minus k 1 x 1 minus c 1 x 1 dot minus k 2 x 1 minus x 2 minus C 3 x 1 dot minus x 2 dot. So, we can write, so we collect the terms like x 1 term. So, minus k 1, so this is x 1 and this is minus k 2 x 1. So, k 1 plus k 2 x 1 and this is minus c 1 x 1 dot and here minus c 3 x 1 dot. So, this is minus c 1 plus c 3 x 1 dot and this is plus k 2 into x 2 and this is plus c 3 into x 2 dot. So, we can write this equation m x 1 double dot plus c 1 plus c 3 x 1 dot plus k 1 plus k 2 x 1 minus c 3 x 2 dot minus k 2 x 2 and that is equal to f t. So, this is the equation of motion for the first mass and this is again the differential equation of second order. Now, the second mass we write here. So, m 2 x 2 double dot equal to minus. 
So, in this direction we have these two forces k 2 x 1 minus x 2 plus c 3 x 1 dot minus x 2 dot and minus c 2 x 2 dot minus k 3 x 2. So, we can simplify this. So, here is we collect x 2. So, k 2 this is minus x 2 and this is plus. So, k 2 minus k 2 plus k 3 x 2 and here is x 2 dot and this is x 2 dot. So, minus c 3 plus c 2 x 2 dot plus k 2 x 1 plus c 3 x 1 dot. So, we can write m 2 x 2 double dot plus c 3 c 2 plus c 3 x 2 dot plus k 2 plus k 3 x 2 plus c 3 x 1 dot plus k 2 x 1 equal to 0. This is the differential equation for the second mass. Of course, here it will be c 3 x 1 dot this will be minus sign and here k 2 x 1 this will be minus sign because this will go to the other side. Now, we can take the Laplace transform of these both equations. So, if we take this, so this is m 2 s square x 2 s plus c 2 plus c 3 x 2. Here we have the first order. So, s x 2 s plus k 2 plus k 3 x 2 s minus c 3 s x 1 s minus k 2 x 1 s equal to 0. So, here we can write m 2 s square plus c 2 plus c 3 s plus k 2 plus k 3 x 2 s minus c 3 s plus k 2 x 1 s this is equal to 0. So, let us say this is equation number 3. Similarly, we can write this equation. Equation number 1 we can write, we take the Laplace transform of this equation number 1 and we can write. So, this here it is m 1 So, we can write m 1 s square plus and this is x 1 s plus c 1 plus c 3 s x 1 s plus k 1 plus k 2 x 1 s minus c 3 s x 2 s minus k 2 x 2 s equal to f s. So, this is equation number 4. So, now we have this equation 3 and 4. We can we I rewrite this equation 4 like we can write m 1 s square plus c 1 plus c 3 s plus k 1 plus k 2 and this is x 1 s minus c 3 s plus k 2 x 2 s 
equal to f s. So, this is let us say this is equation 4. Now, there is Kramer's rule, we can apply Kramer's rule to find the solution of the we to find x to s by f s, because our objective was to find this transfer function. So, we can apply the Kramer's rule. So, we can see here the Kramer's rule tells that if we have the linear equations in the form a x plus b y equal to m and c x plus d y equal to n, we can find x and x is equal to. So, x is the first variable. So, we replace this. So, we have a determinant a c b d here and we replace a c with m and n. So, m n b d this determinant and y equal to we replace this b and d with m n. So, this term. So, now we have the similar equation here. We have here x 1. So, a x 1 plus b y 1 uh, a x 1 plus b x 2 here c x 1 plus d x 2 and these. So, this is the similar equation and we can find from this if we say the determinant delta. So, determinant delta is equal to m 1 s square plus c 1 plus c 3 plus k 1 plus k 2 and minus c 3 s plus k 2 and here also minus c 3 s plus k 2 and this is m 2 s square plus c 2 plus c 3 s here is s into s c 2 plus c 3 s plus k 2 plus k 3 plus k 2 plus k 3. So, this is determinant delta. So, if we want to find x 2 s upon f s, we have to we can find it x 2 s upon f s equal to c 3 s plus k 2 upon delta. So, here this term we can find from the Kramer's rule from we can see we can apply this Kramer's rule and we we can find this term and here is this delta. So, we can find this transfer function. So, uh, again this uh, examples were taken from the books of uh, Norman S. Nice. So, uh, we learned here how to write the differential equations for a translation mechanical system and how to uh, find the transfer, uh, uh, how to find the transfer function solving these differential equations for a single degree of freedom system as well as the two degree of freedom system. So, I thank you uh, for uh, this lecture and see you in the next lecture.